Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we will try and understand the concept of photo transduction via only one multiple choice question. Okay, so I will be post uh, putting up that question now. The question says the rod receptor potential differs from other sensory receptors in that it shows is it a depolarization, decreased negativity, increased conductance of sodium or hyperpolarization. So here he is asking that the rod receptor potential is different from the receptor potential from receptor potential of other sensory receptors in which way? Is it that the rod receptor potential is showing you depolarization? Is it that there is a decrease in negativity? Is it that there is an increase in the conductance of sodium? Or is it that the rod receptor potential shows the feature of hyperpolarization? Okay, so this is the question. If at all you know the answer, well and good. But I would like to discuss regarding this question. Okay, so let's start with the visual cycle. Okay, the rod in the visual cycle, the rods contain a photosensitive pigment which is called as rhodopsin. Okay. So this rhodopsin is having one more name. It is also called as visual purple. What is this visual purple or rhodopsin? This visual purple or rhodopsin, it is nothing but it's a combination of two compounds. One is called as, one is an opsin and the opsin which is present here is called as cotopsin. Another one is an aldehyde and that aldehyde is called as the retinol. Okay. So the retinol which is present in this rhodopsin is 11 cis retinol. Fine. And this 11 cis retinol, it has a peak sensitivity to light at a wavelength of 505 nanometer. And whenever light strikes this rhodopsin, what is going to happen is the 11 cis retinol which is present in the rhodopsin is going to get converted into a all trans retinol. This is very important. So till now what we have understood is that the rod is going to contain a photosensitive pigment and it is called as rhodopsin. Rhodopsin's one more name is, it's also called as visual purple. What is this? A combination of, it's a combination of two things. One is a scotopsin, another one is a retinol. And the retinol which is present in this rhodopsin is nothing but it's a 11 cis retinol. Okay. So whenever light falls on this rhodopsin, the 11 cis retinol which is present in the rhodopsin is getting converted into what is called as a all trans retinol. And the peak sensitivity where maximum conversion of 11 cis retinol into all trans retinol is going to occur is at a wavelength of 505 nanometers. Okay, so this is the basic. So what is going to happen? So this is rhodopsin. Rhodopsin is a combination of two things. One is called as scotopsin and another one is called as 11 cis retinol. So whenever light energy falls on this rhodopsin, what is going to happen is within within fraction of a second, the uh, rhodopsin gets converted into what is called as bathorhodopsin. Immediately within nanoseconds, bathorhodopsin is getting converted into lumirhodopsin and within microseconds, lumirhodopsin gets converted into what is called as metarhodopsin. And then again within milliseconds, metarhodopsin 1 is getting converted into metarhodopsin 2. Okay. Then this metarhodopsin 2 takes some time and it gets converted into all trans retinol. So what has happened here is that 11 cis retinol has got converted into all trans retinol. And after some time, the all trans retinol, again it is converting back into what is called as 11 cis retinol. And this 11 cis retinol combines with the scotopsin and again it leads to the formation of rhodopsin. So when light strikes rhodopsin which is a which is also called as a visual purple which is a pigment present in the rod what is going to happen is 11 cis retinol has to ultimately get converted into this compound which is called as a all trans retinol. So, the products which are forming in between are bathorhodopsin, lumirhodopsin, metarhodopsin 1 and then metarhodopsin 2. Then one more thing which happens here is that all trans retinol can get converted into all trans retinol and all trans retinol also can get converted into all trans retinol. These are isomer forms which are happening and all trans retinol is nothing but vitamin A. Fine. 
so the most important thing in this entire conversion of the uh, levin cis retinal into all trans retinal is meta rhodopsin 2 which is going to cause few changes in the rods because of that the rods are going to produce an impulse which will be transmitted to the next cell which is the bipolar cell okay so this is the structure of the rod we all know the structure so what is this rod is divided into basically few parts this is called as the outer segment of the rod okay this is the outer segment this is called as the inner segment and this is the nucleus of the rod and what you are seeing here is the synaptic knob what you are seeing here is the synaptic knob okay so in the outer segment of the rod are present few channels okay which are called as cyclic gmp gated channels so what do these channels do these channels are causing influx of sodium that is sodium from outside is entering into the rod okay then in the inner segment also there are some channels which are called as potassium selective channels what do these potassium channels do they are causing the efflux of potassium that is potassium from inside is going out okay so listen carefully it's very important to understand this concept so on one side what is happening is a positive ion from outside is entering inside the cell and on another side what is happening a positive ion from inside is going out of the cell and the sodium is entering into the cell via channels which are called as cyclic gmp gated channels fine so once the sodium has entered into the cell in the inner segment we are seeing there is a pump which is present here this is nothing but our sodium potassium atpase pump what is the function of the sodium potassium atpase pump the sodium which has entered inside the cell is being now pumped out and the potassium is pumped in so whatever potassium is pumped in it is going out okay so sodium which has been pumped in is going out potassium which is outside is entering inside via the sodium potassium atpase pump so this is what is happening now what is going to happen is that whenever light strikes the rod what is present in the rod what is present in the rod is a compound which is called as rhodopsin so immediately what is going to happen the rhodopsin is going to get converted into so many compounds and one important compound is meta rhodopsin 2 so what does this meta rhodopsin 2 does it that it is going to cause activation of a protein which is called as g protein transducin g protein transducin now this g protein transducin is going to cause activation of an enzyme which is called as cyclic gmp phosphodiesterase now this cyclic gmp phosphodiesterase is going to cause conversion of cyclic gmp it's going to cause conversion of cyclic gmp into 5 dash gmp so now what is happening inside the cell is that the level of cyclic gmp is coming down so once the level of cyclic gmp inside the cell goes down what is going to happen is the cyclic gmp gated sodium channels they are going to close and hence the sodium influx into the cell which used to happen usually now it is not going to happen am i clear cut light falls on the rod rhodopsin gets converted into meta rhodopsin 2 meta rhodopsin 2 is going to cause activation of g protein transducin g protein transducin is going to cause activation of cyclic gmp phosphodiesterase activation of cyclic gmp phosphodiesterase is going to cause conversion of cyclic gmp into 5 dash gmp the concentration of 5 dash gmp inside the cell reduces this is going to cause closure of cyclic gmp gated sodium channels in the outer segment of the rods so the sodium influx is now not going to take place so this is this process is called as signal transduction 
Now what is going to happen? There is no sodium inside. Okay. The sodium, the concentration of whenever a light is falling on the rod, what is happening is the concentration of sodium inside the cell is reduced. And whatever sodium is inside the cell, it is pumped outside. What is pumping it outside? Yes, the pump which is pumping the sodium outside is the sodium potassium ATPase. Now what is happening? Potassium is entering inside and potassium is immediately leaking out via the potassium channels. So now what is happening to the concentration of positive ions inside the cell? The concentration of positive ions inside the cell is going to decrease. Hence, this is causing an increase in negativity inside the cell. So, whenever there is an increase in the negativity inside the cell, the cell is going to become hyperpolarized. Okay, hyperpolarized. So, the activation of the rod, unlike any other sensory receptor, is happening because of the hyperpolarization but not because of the depolarization. So, if you remember what is depolarization, depolarization is a process wherein a positive ion from outside is going to enter inside, isn't it? So, once the positive ion from outside enters inside, what is going to happen? The negativity inside the cell is going to reduce or in another way inside of the cell is going to become more positive. So, once the negativity inside the cell is reducing, this is causing the cell to uh, depolarize. But when the negativity inside the cell is going to decrease, what is going to happen? The cell is going to undergo a process of hyperpolarization. So, that is what is happening here. Fine. So, what is what happens? This, these are the steps. So, activation of the transducing. Activation of phosphodiesterase decreased in the, decrease in the intracellular cyclic GMP level. This, cause, this causes closure of the sodium channel and ultimately causes hyperpolarization. So, once the cell is hyperpolarized, the neurotransmitter release is going to decrease. So, the neurotransmitter, if you don't know which neurotransmitter, here the neurotransmitter is glutamate. So, once the release of the neurotransmitter decreases, what is going to happen is, there is going to be some kind of a response in the bipolar cell. Some kind of a response in the bipolar cell. So, this is how the process of phototransduction is going to take, take place. Now, coming back to our question, the rod receptor potential differs from other sensory receptors in that it shows, does it show depolarization? No, we know now that the rod does not show depolarization. In fact, it is going to show hyperpolarization. Will there be a decrease in the negativity? No, there is going to be an increase in the negativity inside the cell. Will there be an increased conductance of the sodium? No, because of the conversion of rhodopsin into metarhodopsin and activation of the phosphodiesterase, the cyclic GMP is getting converted into 5-GMP and hence the cyclic GMP concentration inside the cell is going to reduce. This is going to cause reduction or closure of sodium channels and hence the conductance of the sodium channel is going to decrease. So, the only thing which is happening to the cell is hyperpolarization. So, if we understand, if we have understood this topic and if we know the concept behind the uh, generation of the impulses in the rods and cones or the process of phototransduction, it's just a cakewalk to solve such kind of questions okay so that's it for today thank you share and subscribe my video as much as possible and if you have any doubts please leave a comment thank you